Director of Learning Commons and User Services. Um, I can never remember it because it's too long. And every time I say it, after hearing David Lakers talk, I'm reminded how I have the wrong word in my title. But I didn't make the title, so. And then this is my counterpart. I'll go ahead and let you introduce I'm Krista Shellhorn. I virtually do nothing during this presentation, <laughs> but I am able to walk around and assist as you have one-on-one -on -one questions or need me as she's talking. So <laughs> don't, don't, don't feel afraid to wave I mean, and I will come to you. Well, it's virtual, virtually here. Yeah, well, and, and the reason she has nothing to, nothing to do, which is not at all true, is because I procrastinate and didn't get the session done until last night. Mm -hmm. Not true. It's a little true. Okay, so we're going to talk about engaging through social media at iLeague USA. We will not be talking in this session about how you can um, use social networking in your library or your home institution. That's a different session for a different day. This is really the nuts and bolts of it, like super basic. I've got a set path. If we don't follow it, I'm 100% okay with that. So if you've got questions, stop me at any point in time. Um, there are just some things I want to go over before we get going, and then we'll kind of delve into it. But I just want to figure out what I'm going to do. How many of you have a Facebook profile? Okay, how many of you have a Twitter? A Facebook profile. Yep, yep, okay. How many of you have a Twitter account? How many of you have a Twitter account and have tweeted more than once? <laughs> nice. All right. I like what I'm working with. Okay. So engaging through social media at Ivy USA. If you have not figured it out yet, in addition to talking to one another in a room, we will engage with each other online. In addition, this time around, to engaging with four other states. That's a lot of online engagement happening all at one time. Um, so, you know, we're just going to kind of figure it all out. Island USA is using two formats this year, Facebook and Twitter. That's it. There's no Flickr, there's no Pinterest, there's no Tumblr, there is Facebook and Twitter. So that's what I'll be talking about. All right, so some things you need to talk about before you start tweeting. This is my bad use of a, a pun, I suppose. Or you make like, oh, you're going to hate me because I'm going to move all the time. I'm That's so sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a lot of nervous energy, so I don't know how to stand still. Um, before you make like, we're going to before you post to Facebook, before you do anything else, this is just basic stuff. You have to sit down. You don't have to actually sit down with yourself wherever, you're, wherever you are. But you need to make a concerted effort to tell yourself that you have to decide who your audience is and what your goals are. And the most important part of, of coming up with these is realizing that they can change, and they will change all of the time. When I first started using Twitter, um, I was in grad school, and most of the people who were following me, my audience, were um, my, my student, students who were in class with me, you know, people I had class with or previously had class with and, you know, wanted to, con you know, stay connected with. Um, when I moved here to Springfield, I went to, I do a lot of work with student life on our campus, and I went to an event and retweeted, I tweeted as the library at this event. I was really proud of that event. We have a haunted library annually at my library. It's my baby. It won best um, event of the year last year. It was unbelievable. Um, and so I retweeted what I tweeted as the library on my personal account because I was just so proud of it. By the end of that night, I had six students following me and three faculty members. My audience just changed dramatically. And that's okay with me, but I needed to be aware of it. So your audience will change. Um, Rachel's going to give a talk on privacy again? Already has? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Thank you. You need to go to that if you do not know how to set your privacy settings. Twitter has one. Private or public? Facebook has a slew of them. You can make groups, you can do all sorts of crazy things. Here you're either only available to your followers or you're available to everybody. If you are tweeting, if you're tweeting right now, if you just tweeted while Beck was talking and you use the hashtag and somebody in Ohio searched by that hashtag and your account is public, they can see it. Okay? So that's just kind of how it works. So make, take some time to think about 
who you are, who you're talking to, and what your purpose for being there is. You have, a, you have, you have your identity. This is your digital identity. And I am a firm believer that they should be pretty much the same person. A lot of you might have a personal and a professional. Uh, that seems like way too much for me to handle. I don't want to handle that much. Um, so it's not, it's not going to be my advice to you on how to go with it, um, but it's certainly an option. But nonetheless, you got to figure out who you're going to be, and you need to stick to it. Or you need to be willing to roll with it as your audience changes. And then you have to find balance. Beck talked about it a little bit. Um, how you have to figure out who you are online. Are you going to be completely professional? Are you going to be completely personal? Are you going to ch choose one medium for one side and one for the other? And I'll let you give your table. Yeah, that's, um, that's kind of the route that I've taken. And that's just because I found that Facebook to me feels more like having a conversation with my friends and I can see their kids, they can see my kid, you know, I like watching people's pets and, you know, stuff like that. Whereas with Twitter, I use it when I'm at conferences, I use it to follow educational leaders uh, in the tech field so that I can see what are they talking about. I use it to take part in, um, in Missouri, we have a thing called MoEd Chats, and so every night at nine, it's a MoEd Chat or an Ed Tech Chat, and so <coughs> those are the things that I use Twitter for. I don't, I don't use it the way that she does, and most of our teens are using it more in because it's short and it's to the point, and that's that. They're Instagram and they're Twitter more than they are Facebook these days. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. yeah, yeah. So you just have to figure out what your balance is. Yesterday, um, Beck had some paper available to her, so she drew Venn diagrams, which you'll either remember from math class or you use to teach Boolean searching, or both. Um, and the idea is you have that overlap between your professional and your, um, and your personal. And how much overlap you have is your balance. Your overlap might be everything. I mean, everything's a free for all. Your overlap might be this teeny tiny little sliver, and you just have to figure out what's gonna make you comfortable, um, but you just need to figure it out. Um, because the moment you tweet something, whether you go and delete it seconds later, it already showed up on somebody's feed, and if they know how to take a screenshot, they've got a copy of it. Um, I used to work with a person who decided that posting to her Facebook, that after she resigned, she was using her sick days instead of vacation days because vacation days get um, you get paid for when you leave. Um, even though she wasn't sick, it was a good idea for five minutes, and then she took it down. Three people at this institution had already saved it and turned her in. That's all it takes. So it, you can't delete anything from the internet. It's a lesson. But um, you know, just think about what you're doing <laughs> and, and don't and don't post stupid stuff. No, okay. You know, just remember who your audience is and what your goals are. And do not say anything online that you wouldn't say in a room at this volume or, or louder with a microphone, with a, with a bullhorn, whatever it is. Just don't do it. Um, I, like, I like what Beck said, you know, if it gives you pause, then pause. And that's absolutely correct. But literally think to yourself, would I stand in a crowd and yell this out? And if you wouldn't or you think you might not want to, depending on the date, then don't. Absolutely don't. All right, so this is, I mean, there's a lot of other terminology, but these are the things that I want to break down. <coughs> a tweet is your thought, your statement, whatever it is, in 140 characters or less, and you're going to either share it with the world or you're going to share it with your followers. If you add a link, depending on the various tools you use to add images, videos, that type of thing, they usually count against your 140 characters. An at reply or a mention, it's simply placing the at symbol in front of somebody's username or handle to direct a message to them or, or reply to them. And I just want to point out that this says direct a message to them as opposed to down here where it says direct message because they are different things. At replying somebody is just if I'm in this room and I want to just speak to one of you. So you can all hear me if I just say, hey, Krista, 
So I was speaking to her, but you all can hear me. That's an at reply, that's a mention. A direct message, I should have put these together, I'll change it next time. Direct message is a private message from me to another user that no one else can see. So a message directed at somebody, a tweet directed at somebody and a direct message, there's your difference. And it's a big difference. It's a huge difference if you take an inappropriate picture of yourself and you're a politician and you just tweet it instead of direct messaging it. I think we've all learned that. Don't do that. Okay, so that is a huge difference. But nonetheless, Twitter gives you this capability. It's just like in Facebook, you can send a message just to somebody and not put it on your wall. Same thing we're working with here. But just make sure you understand the difference. Uh, retweeting is sharing another person's tweet with your followers or the world, depending on what your settings are set at. Um, and there are two ways to do it, and I will show you both ways. And then a hashtag is using the little number symbol. And we should be really good at understanding hashtags because we're librarians. It's like subject headings. It's just a way to organize all of the tweets. They're usually based on a topic or a, a theme and then or an event. So here we're using hashtag I lead USA. So if you tweet something from here and put that hashtag in it, you've joined the conversation. Um, every state is using this hashtag. So when you do a has hashtag search, you're going to see what everyone here is tweeting and you're going to see what everybody at the other four states is tweeting, which is really cool, except there, there are times where we've been ebbing and flowing based on everybody's different schedules at the various states. There'll be times when it's going to be a lot of tweets. And this is only day one, so the more people who start tweeting, the more tweets there's going to be with this hashtag. So just be aware of that. It's, it's all five of us, which is amazing. All right. Does anybody have any questions, like burning questions they want to know about Twitter? Yeah. How, how do you do that direct message? Oh, I'll show you that. All right. So this is my Twitter feed. Um, oh, the other thing I want to say about uh, whether you're private or public, when people follow you and if you allow them to follow you, they can see who you follow, and who you follow says something about you, so just be aware of that. If you look at who I follow, you're going to find out really quickly that I'm a librarian, and you're going to find out really quickly that I'm a TV nerd. So right now, most outside of I Leave You, which I care so much about, the other two things being on my list right now, Doctor Who comes back on Saturday, and Game of Thrones on Sunday. <laughs> I'm pretty stoked. And so there's a lot going on on my feed surrounding those two things right now. So, but, you know... Just keep that in mind. Who you follow says something about you. So um, you've got everything you need at the top of the screen. If you click on this little gear thing right here, that's your settings, your direct messages are the first thing on the list. And I'm going to be honest with you, I can't remember the last time somebody direct messaged me and whether or not I deleted it, so I'm not going to click on that on this giant screen that's being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if that's available on the phone setting as well? This is honestly, this is the first time I've ever gotten on Twitter on my computer. I, whenever I read other, I just don't on my phone. The answer is it depends on what app you're using. Right? Okay. Yeah, a lot of features on your mobile devices are going to depend on the app you chose to use, and there's a lot of them. Yes. You just mentioned that <coughs> people find out a lot about you from what you follow, but also who follows you. Is there yep. any way to control who follows? You? Yeah, you would set your your account to private, and then you have to authorize everybody who follows you. It's just like on Facebook, they can friend you, but you have to approve them before you're actually friends. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay. Any other desperate questions? <coughs> Otherwise, we'll work through some stuff. Okay. There are two ways to tweet. Also, don't say you're twittering. You're tweeting. Huh. <laughs> tweeting. That's the verb. I like tweeting. Yes. Yeah. You don't, you don't go Twittering, you go tweeting. Um, there are two ways to tweet in the, in the home Twitter web interface. You can click on this little blue guy up here, there's a little quill in it, and it'll open up a box. Just say whatever you want, and 140 characters or less. Or you can just click over here on the left-hand side, and a box will expand for you here as well. Twitter's pretty smart, so 
if I start typing in, because I want to direct a tweet to my friend Amanda, <laughs> I can just start typing in, I happen to know the beginning of her handle, but it'll figure out the rest for me and I can just click on her and there she is, so I know I haven't misspelled it or anything. That will only work for somebody that, that um, you follow, I believe, not just anybody. Um, Hashtags, you're going to use hashtags a lot if you're going to be tweeting here at the conference. Um, there's a couple ways you can go about figuring out. This is a search box. I can just type in I lead USA and a lot of things are going to pop up. And a lot of things are popping up because the way that the handle is spelled, it has a space or an underscore in it, I think. But People are talking about it nonetheless, and so I can see these hashtags right here. Hashtags are hyperlinks, so I can also click on a hashtag. Did it go? I guess so. I can also click on a hashtag that way, so you can either search in the box at the top, or if you see a tweet come through on your feed that somebody that you follow sent out and you like their hashtag and you want to figure out what they're talking about, you can click on the hashtag. That so long as you've got that, that number sign and then letters after it, it will automatically hyperlink it. If you come up, some people like to put out hashtags like, hashtag, I really hate Mondays, they're kind of the worst. Well, you're only gonna find other tweets with that hashtag if somebody else uses it. So it's only so good as what people use them for. Um, in this case, you're gonna find a lot of things under I Lead USA. You would find a lot of things if somebody were uh, using hashtags libraries or library bins. Um, that's going to be pretty standard. So you can just click on them that way. When you get to a has hashtag search that you want to continuously go back to, save yourself a step. Go to the gear, not at the very top in the black bar, but the gear in this white box. And you can save your search. And then this is the fun part. Figuring out where your saved searches are. They are not up here where you might think they want would be, you simply just have to put your cursor in that search box at the top. And then every save search you have pops up. That's all there is to that. <coughs> Questions? Okay, following people. Here it's gonna be pretty easy. Follow the I Lead USA hashtag. You're gonna see lots of people. So if you were super impressed by Beck's talk, you can go right here. She just happens to show up because she just tweeted. You would click on her name, her handle. A little box could pop up. It would say follow here, but I already follow her, so if I clicked there, I would unfollow her, that would be sad. But all you would do is click follow, and then you're following her. Twitter will, like Facebook, make suggestions for you right here. So based on the people I follow, it makes suggestions for other people. If you start following a bunch of librarians, it just mostly tells you to follow more librarians, which is cool. But you know, that's how that's gonna you know kind of work. Because there's gonna be so many tweets coming in with this hashtag from all of the states. If you want to try to monitor what's happening here at Illinois, there is a kind of workaround for that, you can create a list. A list is different than a safe search in that a list is a group of people that you select and put into this list. But when you go and view the list, and, and I'll, I'll show you how to do this, it's going to show you everything those people have tweeted, period. It's not going to be based on a topic or an event or a conference or whatever it is. It's just everything they've tweeted. It's a way to keep track of a group of people as opposed to a topic. So they both kind of have their shortcomings in this case, but depending on how you want to look at it, one might be ma more manageable than the other. You do the same thing you do earlier. You go up to that same gear in the black bar. It's the second one. It's lists. You would click create list. You would name it something. Even if your account is set to public, you can make your list private. 
If they're public, then other people can follow those lists too. They can say, oh, that's a super cool list. I'm going to follow that. Your decision. You would call it something, and then it would show up here, along with these. Then you can click on it. There's only one person, person in this list, um, and that's I Lead USA. So as you can see, all of the tweets are I Lead USA. So they do all look like they're on a theme, but this is the one I did back for I Lead U minus the SA. Um, these are the people that I added to this list. So, for example, Mick, who you guys will meet in June, I think, um, who's part of the instructor crew, he is tweeting here, but he's not tweeting about I Lead You. But he's showing up here because this is just a list of people with their tweets. All right, so those are the, the two different ways you can kind of filter all the things that are going to be coming through. And the lists are a really great way to just keep up with a group of people. So if you know that there's a bunch of people at ILEAD U that you think might be tweeting during the intercession and they may or may not use the hashtag, though they should, use the hashtag during the intercession if you're going to be tweeting. Um, but nonetheless, if you just want to kind of keep in touch with them, put them into a list. And then instead of just having to look through your whole Twitter feed all day long, the more people you follow, the more it updates all day, the more overwhelming it becomes, you can just use a list to kind of make it into consumable chunks. And you can say, I'm going to sit down for 20 minutes and figure out what's going on with people at ILEAD U. You can go to your ILEAD U essay. It's really hard to add those two extra letters. Um, list and just kind of scroll through that group of people as opposed to everybody in their group that you follow. All right. Other questions? Any questions? You guys are such a quiet group. Is it because the lights are turned off in here? <coughs> All right. There are two ways to retweet, like I mentioned. You can simply hover your mouse, and you get all these little guys here. To reply, you would just click here. It builds you a box. It puts the at reply, the mention that you need in the front of it, and you can just speak back to them. Again, this is you putting a tweet on your profile that is directed towards, in this case, UIS student life. If you hit retweet, and you're in Twitter, the web version of Twitter, it's just going to bring up this box, and it's going to let you retweet it or cancel it. You can't edit this. It will retweet exactly how it is, and that's all there is to it. That's the new way. It's been, I mean, it's been the standard for Twitter for a while now, but I still call it the new way. The old way allows you to add a comment to the original tweet. And that's not quite as easy in regular Twitter, but in certain uh, tools or apps that you might use, like Hootsuite, for example, is what we use, run all of our social networking here at um, UIS in the library. I shouldn't say all of UIS. Um, in the library, and it actually retweets the old way by default, which is one of the major reasons why we use that tool instead of using Twitter itself, but nonetheless. Um, you would just take the original tweet Copy it, drop it in your box. Put the at reply in front of it. So that's exactly how it would look if you just retweeted it. It would look, go out just like that. In front of here, just write whatever you want. And you can put a capital R and a capital T in front of it to really let people know that it's a retweet. But you can actually do it the other. Student Life is going to get a notice that I mentioned them in a tweet, and then they'll go in and see that I just retweeted them. So it's a way for me to share something I think is cool with my followers. So that's retweeting. I've literally gone through everything I have. Can you explain a little bit more about Hootsuite? Hootsuite? Yeah, yeah I totally can. So um, I'll probably, hopefully, maybe give a session in June about tools you can use to quote unquote manage your social life. Um, Hootsuite does some really cool stuff. It's very similar to TweetDeck, if you've heard about TweetDeck, and there's others, but those are kind of the top two. 
Hootsuite allows you to plug in multiple accounts across platforms. So it allows us to pull in our, in the library, for example, we've got our Twitter, our Facebook, our blog, which is WordPress, and possibly our YouTube channel. All in this one account. I can post to multiple platforms at the same time. So I can send one thing out to Twitter and Facebook, um, which is good and bad, and a whole conversation on its own. But nonetheless, it allows you to do that. It also allows you to schedule <coughs> tweets in advance. So for example, I know I'm going to be gone this whole week. I've scheduled all the tweets that will be happening for the week so that it looks like our Twitter is active without me having to sit at my desk. Um, it also allows for, the paid version allows for multiple users. So if you have six people managing it, you can go in, you can set people as editors, you can set them as just content creators so that you can kind of monitor the stuff that's going out, which is really nice if you have a lot of people doing it. Um, and, uh, you know, those can be all scheduled to make sure you're not overlapping each other and that kind of stuff. It's a free version with basic functionality, it also has stats built in, which is really nice. You can figure out which of your tweets are getting the most hits mm -hmm. and which ones you should probably start stop tweeting. <laughs> no one cares about it. Any other questions? How many of you think you will probably tweet while you're here? <laughs> That's not fair, you've been tweeting all day. How many of you who have never tweeted before feel like this is, this is it, you're in it, nice, okay. So, I'm trying um, to sign up now, but I can't get into this. Oh, you can't get signed in? Mm. Yeah, so let's... Pending. Does that mean anything? I do not know the answer oh. to that question. So a couple other things. When, when um, creating a handle, you need to decide how much transparency you want. So you, my handle is just my, my first initial and then my last name. I don't care that people know who I am. I'm putting myself out there that way. That's fine. Some people choose, so here's a good example. So um, some people will choose, in this example, it's coming out of Mashable, essentially at Mashable, but it's Pete Cashmore. And so this is his name. This is the name he used when he created the account, but that's his handle. You guys might have a hard time seeing it because it's kind of grayed out. So when you're searching for people, you can search for them by name, and they will pop up if when they created their account, they put their real name there. If they didn't put their real name there, they're not gonna show up. You would have to know their handle. Um, you can decide that you want to just have your online identity, avatar, or whatever you wanna call it. You don't have to put a picture of yourself up if you don't want to. Put up a picture of your cat. We're librarians, and you have to say or show a picture of a cat in every presentation. You didn't know that. I learned that last year at Eileen I'm not a cat person, so I wasn't aware. Now I do. I know. Um, that's fine. Put a picture of a cat if that makes you feel comfortable. The idea here is, you know, like, put yourself out there because there's a lot going on and there's so many people you can engage with and so much you can learn when you do it. But do it in a space that's comfortable for you and then just baby step your way forward. You know, you'll start following more people. More people will start to follow you. You won't just consume. When I was first on Twitter, I mostly just consumed what people were putting out there. I used it as a tool to keep up in my field. And now I use it as a, you know, a way to have conversations with people I don't see on a regular basis <coughs> for quick little questions. Things like a couple months ago, um, Mick at his library wanted to know if they could start checking out their study rooms. Sent me a tweet and asked if we did it. And if we did, how? You can do that in less than 140 characters. And it keeps things out of your email box. <laughs> My email box is way too full. So, any other questions? Is there, um, if we're all subject to FOIA, so we probably don't want to delete anything, but if, if it's work, if we're doing this for work. But is there a way to delete things? Um, you can del delete a tweet you put out. And can you delete? Like other people's, what's, when I'm signed into to Twitter, for example, I see mm -hmm. like all my nieces tweets and stuff like that. Yep. If somebody looks for me, are they only seeing what I put out or are they seeing people who are connected? Yes. They're only okay. seeing what I, I see put what out. You put out. The minute one of your nieces sends a tweet directed at you, uh -huh. 
there, her handle's right there. They can click on it. If her profile's set to open, they're in mm -hmm. to what she's tweeting. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it kind of works that way. Yeah. So the idea is know if you're public or private and, uh -huh. and be careful about that cause, because, yeah, they'd be able to just click on her handle right there uh -huh. and see it. If she, if she directed a tweet at you, that would kind of, you know, show up on your... Mm -hmm. If you tweet with the hashtag while you're here and your account is set to private, you're not going to show up in the iLead USA um, search stream because you're set to private. Unless somebody here follows you, then your tweet would show up in their search. So it's going to be individualized based on your setting and who follows you and who doesn't. So you do protect yourself a little bit that way, if that's if that's a concern. Um, I totally just thought of something else. Absolutely forgot. In the meantime, how many of you have seen the Ily USA Facebook page? It exists. Um, <laughs> the trick is if you're in Facebook and you try to search for it in the top bar, you have to type in A space lead space USA for it to pop up. But it's there and you can like it. Things are being posted to it. And the same thing goes for this. The minute that you like something or post to something, I imagine you're not all already friends with Krista on Facebook, but you can find her real fast. She's right here. Okay, so just you know, know that that's going to happen. So the more you interact, the, the likelihood that people are going to start to follow you this week and then the upcoming weeks is there. Um, but that's a good thing. <laughs> it's a really, really good thing. We're here to engage and we're here to you know, network and, and, and meet people and, and have some support when you're not here during the intercessions. And this is a really great way to kind of keep in touch with people. Whether Facebook is the, be the way you're going to do it or Twitter is the way you're going to do it. If you're going to decide, um, because you can set a more granular um, privacy setting in your Facebook, if you're going to decide if you work at a school, um, if you work with teens in a public library or you work at a university, chances are you're going to get friend or you're going to get friended by students. You just have to decide at the get-go if you're going to friend them or not. If you don't, fine. If you do, you're going to have to take almost all the requests. You, you can't kind of discriminate between the students. Their feelings get really hurt by that. So do it or don't. It makes it a lot easier for yourself. But it's okay to not friend somebody in Facebook. You can actually reject somebody in Facebook. They'll probably keep talking to you. It's just Facebook. I think <coughs> on that note too, it's important to investigate what your agency's policies might be on something like that. Um, all schools, I believe, had to insert something about social media in their code of conduct for their employees. And so I would definitely check with my employer if I were new to this, just to make sure that I am aware of any parameters that they have set, um, because you don't want to inadvertently be breaking some rule, you know, unless that's your rules breaker, then go for it. But, <laughs> you know, I, I like to follow policies and I like to know what they are so that I don't mistakenly, I just don't friend students. That's, you know, you have to have graduated. That's my policy. So, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. I have. I've had a, a Twitter account for a little while. Uh -huh. um, I've never tweeted. Okay. But I ended up with a couple followers. How does that happen? <laughs> oh yeah, that'll happen. Um, so lots of different ways. There are people out who just solely want to collect people. And so they'll just follow everybody in their grandma because they think they look cool the more people that they follow. Um, also, because they assume that if they follow you, you might follow them back. That gets them more followers, which, you know, it's like it's just like in Facebook. The more friends you have on Facebook, the more popular you are. That kind of, so it's kind of that mentality. Um, if but you... If, if I don't tweet, though, how do they find me? If you're, if you're set to open and, and they can just kind of like prowl around in it, I mean, it, 
a lot of it's probably spam. And I was going to show you guys. If somebody tweets, directs a tweet at you, not a direct message, and you click on connect up here, you're going to see them. So, for, and you're going to see any activity coming off of your page. So, um, six, so six others followed me, plus this person, Tammy Sales, retweeted me three hours ago. Um, I've been added to a list. This is spam. Don't click on things that look like that. So I need to go in and delete that, which I'll actually show you. If you click on the person's name to the left of the follow button, you can do two things at this point. You can block that person, which blocks them from your account, or you can report it as spam. It depends on how, you know, how active you want to be in blocking spam. Um, if you block it, it'll say blocked. And if I refresh my page, if it's gone, I don't have to risk accidentally clicking on said tweet. So um, th there's a lot of ways that they're finding you and, and, and following you. That's kind of how it works. If you go to a conference, like if you go to ALA and you tweet from the vendor floor, <laughs> be prepared for the vendors to follow you. They'll so follow you, and then when you tweet something, they will answer you. Our product will do that, and you're like, thanks. <laughs> Unless it, it will happen. So that seems like one big difference between Facebook and Twitter, um, among other big differences. But so I don't really have a page that people can look at and see my page when I'm on Twitter. You do. I do? Mm-hmm. You do. So when you log in, so this is... What I see when I log into Facebook, mm -hmm. this is my home feed. It's built of all the things that um, I follow. If you click on your name, this is your page. Okay. You can decide what backdrop you want. Um, you can put a picture up here, and this, much like you can put a cover photo on Facebook now, Twitter has done that as well. Clearly, you can see I have not done that. Um, you've got a profile picture. You have a little profile, a little blurb about yourself you can put in, and then a list of all of your tweets. So you can just look and see what I've tweeted. Um, you can see all my photos. So you can see that I recently had some cupcakes. My coworker John, who's a participant here, makes funny faces a lot. And I went to a, a ballet called Dracula, and I had a fight with a cat on the top of a counter. It was ridiculous. It wouldn't come off the counter. <laughs> So yeah, they can when they search for you, this is what's going to pop up. Okay, and you saw that, and show me again where you see mm -hmm. how you can see. You that can see your own from when you're logged in. Yeah, you log in, and you just click on your name, okay. so you can see what other people are going to see by doing that. And but then if you I see someone else's page, you're, you just search for them. Mm-hmm. <coughs> run it through the search. Whether you follow them or not, if it's a pri if it's a public page, you can you can see it. Mm -hmm. And then you just see all their tweets. And then over here, you can see who they're following. You can see who follows them. So, you can find out quite a bit on Twitter. It seems it seems like it's so simplistic in comparison to Facebook, that it's so much safer. But at the end of the day, whether you're in Twitter, in Facebook, in Pinterest, or whatever, you just need to know what privacy settings are available to you, and, and you need to go to Rachel's sessions. Sure. All our questions. Go ahead and call it done. But we'll be around. If you have any questions, feel free to um, ask us. If you want to practice tweeting, you can totally tweet me. That's fine. Um, you can tweet the I lead you. They'll tweet you back. They'll you know they'll talk to you. They'll maybe retweet you. You can retweet each other. It'll be fun at your table. So. But yeah, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. All right. Thanks.